Hi guys, my name is Caitlin and this is my little corner of the internet where I talk about my cross stitching. If you're new, thanks for stopping by and if you are returning, welcome back. Oh, who's that? Hi. I'm in a kind of like a new spot today because I'm trying to take advantage of the sunlight. It's super nice outside and so I'm sitting in front of a different window, but that might mean more cat visitors. They get really excited when I sit on the floor. <laughs> So it's been a while. <laughs> the last time I saw you, okay, full disclosure, I am a little cracked out because I've been working overnights. So I got in at 4 a.m., I slept a little bit, and then I got up and I wanted to record because we have a beautiful day outside. So I have a lot of like natural light coming through the windows, but I'm kind of a mess like outwardly and inwardly. My hair's crazy, my nails are a mess. Sorry, not sorry. If I don't do this today, I will not do it until after Mania, I'm sure. So I'm just gonna push through, but it might be a little choppy and um, have like a lot of cuts and I might just space out and stare off into space <laughs> for no reason, but we're gonna try and push through. Maybe coffee will help. Um, also, my upstairs neighbor is home and like pacing around her apartment in high heels. So you might hear that. Where's she going? I don't know. Her apartment's not that big. But she is definitely doing laps. Okay, so the last time I saw you guys, it was President's Day in February. And since then, life has been super bananas. I told you guys then that I was studying for a big test. So... So if you're new here, I work in film and TV in the prop department in New York City, Big Apple. And um, in order to get your union card in New York City in the prop department, you have to take a series of written and practical exams that are super difficult. They're all timed and it, if you make a single mistake, you fail the whole test, basically. So I, I had taken it twice before and failed. And I really wanted to pass this time because they only offer it every couple of years. And, um, and like I can, I can work without a union card, but only if it's, if it's busy enough. So if it's busy enough, which it has been, and probably will keep being, we got more pilots than LA again for like another year in a row. What? Sorry, West Coast. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if it's busy enough, you can work you can work as like a permit worker, which I have been working since I got here, but getting your card gives you more stability and lets you choose your jobs and gives you a better pension and, and you know, all those kinds of things. So anyway, all that to say, I really wanted to pass. And so I kind of drove myself into the crazy house studying. I, I, I didn't work very much and I didn't work at all in February and I didn't work very much in March and I spent the whole time studying my butt off and I I just got this really, I had really terrible anxiety. I wasn't sleeping. I, I was having daily panic attacks. I just had a really hard time, like a really bad mental health period in February and March. So I was definitely not interested in recording then. I did stitch for therapy. I stitched a lot for, you know, I stitched a lot, but anyway. Um, so that was February and March and um, then I went back to work and March, you know, started pilot season and that was crazy. And, um, after that was over, I, I'm now working on this movie. That's all nights. <laughs> it's all nights. It's overnights basically every day, which, um, if, if you've worked a night shift, you know what I'm talking about, where it doesn't really matter how much you slept before you go into work. I feel like, at least for me, when I work at nights, it doesn't matter how much I've slept. Always between like midnight and 4 a.m., I struggle. It's so hard. It's like the witching hour. I feel like a crazy person. I'm really grouchy. I hate everyone. I want to quit my job. I hate, I hate everyone. Um, I eat garbage food because I'm just trying to stay awake. They're brutal. <laughs> But I've got like five days left and then it's over and then um yeah then it's over <laughs> I 
Okay, so, so I have a couple FFOs to show you. So, um, first of all, I framed, oh, upside down. I framed my singing cat. Sorry for the glare. This is just like a cheap frame from Michael's. My, you know, just laced and laced him and threw him in there. He's, he's pretty straight. He's a little crooked along the bottom. And there's like, there could be a little more room on the edges, but I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. I hung him over my dresser so I can look at him every morning when I'm getting ready. Cause he just brings me so much joy. It's a perfect cat moment. I also framed my tree of stitches. And to be honest, try not to have too much glare there. You can probably see me to, or the camera or, well, I don't know. Anyway. Um, I'm not super in love with how this turned out. This is also a cheap frame from Michaels and I'm not sure. I wanted to use a mat because otherwise you can't really tell that the fabric isn't white because it's like such a pale. This is chrysalis by picture this plus and it's basically the palest green. So I wanted a mat to kind of like show that it's green fabric, but you still can't tell. And I'm not really sure that I love this frame for this piece but so so he's there it's not laced it's just pinned in for now and if I I'm hoping to come across a better frame in the future that I can pop it into but for now anyway it's kind of nice to ha have it up on the wall so I can look at it and um I have one more to show you and that is I FFO'd my stiatch along well i didn't um i sent it to karen from so much to love and had her make it into a project bag and it turned out amazing isn't that amazing i love it it's got a lot of cat hair on it because i've already i use it <laughs> i'm super in love with this bag so um the inside is like polka dot so the process was super easy i cannot recommend it like if you have something you want to finish into a project bag but you don't have sewing skills to do it um it costs i think it was only like 20 ish dollars on top of what it normally costs for a project bag for her so like whatever size this is it was 20 dollars more to have her custom make it she she was super communicative is that a word she the communication was great the process was easy it was fast it only took like four weeks I think so basically I mailed her my piece she invoiced me I paid her my I paid her money she, um, then she pulled fabric from her stash and like I think she also went fabric shopping and sent me pictures of a bunch of different options and uh, I picked this one and then she sewed it up beautifully and sent it to me I can't recommend it enough. I think I might, I'm definitely going to do it again with another project, I'm sure. So, and you know, I decided, <laughs> I decided since it was FFOing and FFOing, FFO supplies don't catch, count <laughs> against Stitch from Stash that this doesn't count for Stitch from Stash. <laughs> so that's a bonus. <laughs> So I also had a, so I have a couple finishes to show you. One of them was totally unexpected. I didn't, I didn't really expect to finish it this year. It wasn't on my focus. It was on my year of whips, but I wasn't focusing on finishing it. But you know, school of magical stitches. I just kept putting stitches into it until it got so close to being done that I was, was like, I guess I might as well finish it. And that is Lizzie Kate's Cat Lessons for People. So here it is. Turned out really great, right? So this is stitched two over two on 32 count Lagana by picture of this plus in the colorway. I think this is ale. And I converted all the colors to color and cotton. So the, well, okay. So the white is actually Threadworks. It's Threadworks 10301, but the yellow is Golden Mum, 
from Color and Cotton. The orange is Primitive Pumpkin. The brown is Mahogany. Um, the green is called Cauldron. It's a, it was from like a Thread of the Month Club a couple years ago, like around October. And the blue is called Corn Flower Blue. I think it turned out really great. I'm really happy with all the variegation and the colors and how it looks. It's gonna look fantastic in my kitchen. I definitely played a little bit of thread chicken though. This is this is how much I have left of the brown color. That's it. <laughs> and this is how much of the orange I have left. So I just made it. I was getting really, really nervous towards the end because I think neither of those colors are were available to rebuy. And if I even if I did, I'm sure they would be different dye lots because I know that I got them when I first joined her thread club a couple of years ago. So in any case, that's done. So that's exciting. And that was a good, a nice little uh, boost to my stitch from stash, which is obviously in the negative. When is it not? And I, I also finished, I also had another big finish and I finished um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery's Happily Ever After, which is great because one of my main goals for the year is to finish all my cells and to not have any outstanding cells. So this was like a third of the way done when the year started and I powered through and finished it last month. This month, I finished it this month, a couple weeks ago in April. So I'll insert a picture of where you saw it last time. And last time I thought I was close to being done and then it took another month and a half to finish it and another like 3000 stitches to finish it. That border is big. Those blocks are dense. <laughs> I also did some recharting, so a lot of frocking. So first of all, here it is in all its glory. So this is stitch two over two on picture this plus Lugana and the colorway chime and it's the opalescent. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. And I stitched it with the called for DMC. I did not use the called for weeks dye works. I made a couple changes. First of all, everybody got French knots for eyeballs instead of they were charted as just a little black square. I didn't think that gave enough coverage, so I gave everybody French knots. Um, second of all, you'll notice I recharted Sleeping Beauty down here. So um, Sleeping Beauty is as she was charted, girl on a bed in pink pink bed clothes. Um, the these down here was supposed to be let's see if it's a little focused. Um, down there was supposed to be a cat, but I changed that to, oh my God, my hand's shaking, that's why it's not focusing. Um, but I changed the cat into like a rose vine. So that's what those are supposed to be. And then I added the spinning wheel and um, I added the little fairies in. So I think that looks a lot better. The way it was charted, there was like a cat and a window and a bird and it just didn't make any sense to me with the Sleeping Beauty as I, story as I know it. So. That's what I did, and I'm really happy with it. So that's done. That was a nice $22 stitch from stash credit. And it is a huge relief to have one of my older projects off my back. So that felt great. Okay, let's talk about whips. So first up is Deco Spirits. I will insert a picture here of where you saw it last time. I have been using this for the full coverage fanatics challenges and I'm a little behind. I completed February, but I did not complete March. I'm still working on it. So this is where I'm at now. She's really taking shape, right? I have to backstitch through her face, but it's really, I'm so pleased with how it's turning out. Um, and then at the, at, at the advice of basically everyone, this down here was supposed to be, um, DMC metallic gold something. And I changed it to, I think that's Krynik. I can't remember what color I used, but if you're interested, let me know and I'll look it up. I love all the sparkle in these buildings. All these buildings are Krynik. She's got some sparkle in her, um, in her headdress there. Oh, I guess I should show you what it's supposed to look like, right? So this is what it will look like finished. And I'm working on this panel up here, the earth panel. 
it's um these are all, all elements earth fire water air if you didn't know and i'm doing this as a stitch along with angela stitches so i hope you're working on yours too angela so next i was really craving starting something and i almost started a couple huge projects. I almost started a stocking. I almost started a bunch of things, some samplers, but um, I reined myself in and I decided to start a small. So I've been working on, I don't know what the name of this chart is, but it's from Homespun Collectibles. It doesn't have a name. I've just been calling it Sunflowers. I got this in a de-stash sale, I think. So I've been working on this and uh, I did a color and cotton conversion again. That's how much I have done. So the white is color and cotton eggnog. The brown, I think, is color and cotton hot chocolate. From Those were both from her winter mystery boxes. The green is color and cotton evergreen. And then the yellow is the called for DMC yellow seven something. And the black is not actually black. It's actually a super dark blue. It's DMC. Bear with me. DMC 939, which I think looks great. Because like blackbirds really aren't black, right? They're like, if you look at their feathers, they're super like rich purpley black blue with like hints of green. So I think that works out. But I'm hoping to finish this this weekend. We are flying to Canada tomorrow. My dad's getting remarried, so I'm hoping I can finish this in the airport. I don't have that much to go. I have the fence to go across, a couple more flowers, and I'm over halfway done. So I'm hoping to finish this up for a little more Stitch from Stash credit before the end of the month. Next, I worked on my maple sugar project. So this is what it's going to look like finished. And I will insert a picture here of where you saw it the last time. I got um, a chunk of work done on this for Magical Stitches. I realized that there's actually a huge mistake in the cauldrons here. This whole section, that whole section is off by a little bit. It's supposed to be higher or lower, but I, I'm just fudging it. I'm working with it. So. Since you saw last time I worked on, I added this lady in with her blue cloak, um, some buckets, I started a tree, and then I got kind of tired of stitching brown and put it away. But it's coming along. I don't know if I'll finish this this year, but we'll see. And this is stitched on, I think this is 32 count Lugana from Silk Weaver in the colorway, I want to say it's sudden storm and I had them dye it for me to have less white than it normally would. Next I did the smallest amount of work on women in history for magical stitches. It's not really worth showing but it's here so I'll show it to you. Anyway I'll insert a picture here where you saw it last time and then I just worked on this airplane for Amelia Earhart. I think I did this for the muggle studies challenge because I said muggles need airplanes to fly unlike wizards. So I don't know, it's probably like only 300 stitches or something like that. But now that Happily Ever After is done, I can put more time into that one, which gives me a little bit of anxiety because it's so big and there's so little done on it. It's like one sixth of the way complete. There's a lot to go. I also worked on my I also worked on my Wales project. This is by Meredith, Meredith Marks Designs, and this is a gift I'm stitching for a friend. That's what it will look like. I'll insert a picture here of where you saw it last time. I am stitching this on 32 count Lugana from Picture This Plus in the colorway Helix. And this is where it's at now. So I got some work done on the whale. 
have a counting error somewhere up here, so I stopped working up there, and I figured I would just work all the way across the other edge of the chart, and then, uh, and then I'll once, once I'm all the way across here, I'll work up and do do this rainbow thing, and I'll just fudge whatever the error is. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping this weekend there's a challenge in magical stitches to stitch uh, 500 stitches of 310 and the whales are all outlined in 310 so I'm hoping um, I don't know I'm like gonna bring like five projects to the airport for a one-hour flight and I somehow think I'm gonna accomplish the remainder of the magical stitches extra credit in two flights I don't know <laughs> but anyway so I'm hoping to get to that and get them get the whales outlined. That one is a little bit of a labor of love. It it's simple enough that it's kind of boring and but then these swirls are like complicated enough that you have to pay attention. It's a gift, so I'm not super attached to it and I guess that's the problem. So, and the last thing I worked on was cross stitch nation. I worked on it for a couple of magical stitches challenges, but recently I worked on it for, you had to take a trip into Hogsmeade and visit a store. You could either visit 10 stores and do 100 stitches for each of the 10 stores, or visit one store and do 1,000 stitches. And I decided just to put 1,000 a a thousand stitches into one project. So I said I was going to the clothing store because my boyfriend was, um, a muggle born and I was going to be visiting his muggle parents over the summer with him and I wanted to impress them and not stand out or like be weird to them so I wanted to buy some muggle appropriate clothing that was the story I said so I put a thousand stitches into this for that so I'll insert a picture of where you saw this last time and this is where it's at now so I got a lot done I think since you last saw this I finish this guy well I still have to give him his skin and his hands started the top border here I'm working on this up here for this week's homework work on a vine so I need to do a couple more flowers and fine parts and then that part of the homework will be done but I finished the yellow lady's body I did the pink lady I had the bottom the green lady's butt they're all still headless one because I'm, I'm going to convert the skin tones and I haven't had the mental energy to plan out or figure that out or pull colors for that and two because I think it's kind of funny and then so I was um I did a stitching meetup with Carmen and Debbie Carmen Broadway stitcher and Debbie stitched the stash this weekend and Carmen said that it's kind of like since there's six women in one man it's kind of like the six wives of Henry VIII who had their heads chopped off <laughs> So I'm gonna leave, I guess I think I'm gonna put his his head in and leave them all headless until um, until the end. <laughs> Something wrong with me. <laughs> this needle minder is from House of Mang. Let's see if I can get it in there. Um, it's a peacock, a little dangly thing. Um, if you are not on the House of Mang needle minder train yet, get on that train. I finally, I finally broke down and ordered one, and I ordered a couple more to send out as gifts, but this is super cute and beautiful, like these little hand-painted details. She makes gorgeous needle minders, and they are so insanely cheap. Like, I don't know if it's because of the dollar conversion or what, but the shipping is considerably more expensive than the needle minders. I think I paid, like, a dollar fifty for each needle minder. And then I paid like $9 in shipping. So if you're going to order, order a bunch if you're going to pay $9 in shipping. But yeah, get on, get on the House of Mang train if you're not on it already. I'll put her Instagram link below. So that's it for whips. Um, before I show you purchases, so in my last video, I had to pass the stash and I said I was going to pass along the remaining bits of the kit of this Mill Hill Santa. And a couple people were interested and I did a random number thingy jig, and it goes to Brandy. So Brandy, I commented on your comment and uh, so, re so comment on my comment on your comment and let me know how I can get in touch with you to send this to you in the mail. 
so retirement planning. If you'll recall, I said at the beginning of the year, 2019, no new charts. It's gone pretty well. I survived Nashville. I didn't buy a single chart until last weekend when I had a weak moment and I bought a $4 instant download cross-stitch book on the Google Play Store and it wasn't even worth it. <laughs> so I bought, I'll insert an image here of the book I bought. I bought this Mango Pratique book. So Mango Pratique is a publishing company that has a series of continental style cross-stitch books. They're thin. You can order, you can order the actual books on the French Amazon, amazon.fr, and they're not that expensive but the instant download ones are a lot cheaper and you don't have to pay shipping from France. And I bought it because, so I have, I use this face cream, this Burt's Bees face cream that comes in these little glass jars. And I don't know if you can see, but on the bottom, there's like this honeycomb pattern. So I've been looking for the perfect continental style B to put on here, to stitch and put on here. I saw one in a just in a cross stitcher magazine issue June 2012. Somebody posted on Instagram and it's like the perfect look I want, but even on 40 count fabric over two anyway would be too big. And I didn't really want to stitch something like that over one. And so I thought when I was like Googling and looking at Pinterest images, I thought that this book I was buying had a chart in it that was like, had a B, had a, had a chart for a little B in it that would be perfect. And I had a weak moment and I was like, I really just have this vision for this jar lid. And I bought the book and then it didn't have that chart in it. <laughs> so, cause you can see some things in the preview, but the problem with a preview for a cross stitch book is like usually the first five, 10 pages of a cross stitch book are instructions on how to cross stitch. So most of the preview were instructions on how to cross stitch and I, that's not useful. So, um, I have a little regret about it. I'm a little ashamed, but that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes and, um, I'm still not going to buy any more charts for the rest of the year. I'm going to still, my husband was like, Oh, now the floodgates are going to open. You cracked, but I don't think so. I'm, it's kind of this not buying a chart rule has helped me to be super mindful when I see things and I'm like, Ooh, about whether or not I really love them and are going to stitch them. Like I almost bought so many times the votes from women chart that was released in Nashville, but I decided I'm going to wait. And then 2020, if I still love it, then I'll buy it. But so, so, so I screwed up. I bought a chart. But, it, but one chart, only one chart in 2019 is still pretty good, right? So, and I mean, to be fair, it's a whole book of charts and there is there is a chart in there I really like. I'll insert a picture of it here. Actually, Michelle Bendy, I think you would really like this book because all the charts, all the charts are kind of like that. They're all like these um, like textbooky things is another one that's like a coffee plant. Yeah, so, I'm going to probably stitch those <laughs> and uh so i don't have super regrets but i have a little regret mostly because i didn't get i didn't get my perfect b chart i've been looking through i know i have you're thinking like you have 20 b charts surely there's a b in any of those charts that will go on this jar i've been looking through there might be one that's kind of okay i don't know <sighs> And the bummer is the chart that I saw that I thought I was buying, you know, I saw it on Pinterest that somebody like illegally put up and I have no, I have no idea where to find it for real because the book, the information isn't there. And, uh, even if I did no new charts. Okay. So all that to say that, um, in order to make up, in order to make up for my, my failure, is my my failure is 
your guys' gain. My loss is your guys' gain because um, I feel like in order to justify the new chart, I need to have like a, I need to get rid of one of my charts. And this is a super cute chart that I'm looking at now and I'm like, oh, do I really want to get this away? But you know what? It's super cute, but it's also massive and I am never going to stitch this. And if I decide someday I'm going to stitch this, I can order another copy. So it's got a little, I've never stitched it, but it is a little beat up around the edges because I'm not gentle with my things. Um, anyway, so in order to make up for purchasing a chart, I'm going to give away this soda stitch chart, fairy tales. I think this is the original fairy tales chart that goes this way. Unlike her newer versions, which go this way, but Yes, so if you are interested in this chart, comment below about a New Year's resolution that you have failed to keep. Yeah, and uh, so don't say giveaway, don't don't say, you know, don't say I'd like to stitch, just, just comment below about a New Year's resolution you have failed to keep, and I know, and I will know you're interested in the Soda Stitch Fairy Tales chart, which I will mail to you as penance for purchasing a digital download. I did buy some other things, some other not charts. So, Thinky Dyes so had an Oops Pack sale. I, the best way to know about Oops Packs is to click the notifications icon on Instagram and um, set it so that it will vibrate and make a noise when they whenever Dinky Dies posts, which isn't very often, and it's usually to announce that they have Oops Packs in their, in, their, in their store on Etsy. So I bought a couple. Um, I don't know what any of these colors are, you know, because that's the thing with Oops Packs. Oops Packs are like silk they've dyed that isn't perfect or isn't right, so they can't sell it in their normal store, but I could probably look online and figure out what colors these are. But I got this assortment, and then I also got... It's kind of more fun, crazy, variegated assortment. And I have no plans for these, but I have a feeling they're going to come out in Mania, which we'll talk about in a minute. A long time ago, Michelle Bendy had a bags plus live sale, and uh, I ordered a bag, and then I got stuck in customs, probably because it was so awesome that the customs people didn't want to let it go. So for all of you guys who had your bag stuck in customs, it's probably my fault. So I apologize. But I ordered, I think it's called a Floss Buddy Flip. So there's like 40 pockets on the front and on the back. Look at these sassy French cats. Look at, this cat has a shower cap on. It's like a sassy French cat in a sweater vest wearing a shower cap. I love it. You know all these cats are French because they're wearing stripes. And um, I had my last color and cotton fabric subscription. I decided to cancel it because I'm just hoarding fabric and I'm trying to be more mindful about purchases. And I feel like her shop has reached the point where now you can, you can, not everything is sold out all the time. Like I originally, I joined the fabric club when she first started dyeing fabric because it was impossible otherwise to get her fabric because she was always sold out. And the same with her threads. And now she has a lot of colors that you can that are dyed to order with both threads and fabric, so it's it's easier. Um, and I figured this way I can kind of justify if I decide to. I did not get the Stars and Stripes Patriotic Mystery Box. I thought about it. I'm kind of regretting it now. Maybe I'll see if they're still available. But I'm probably still going to get the Christmas one. So anyway. Um, so my last color that I received was this toasted coconut, which is just this very, this is like the color of my skin in the winter, super pale, with like a hint of bisque. That'll be it. That's like a nice neutral. And then finally, this doesn't count as a chart because there's no charts in here, but I bought this book called samplers and sample makers sampler makers and it's just it's just a really lovely basically coffee table book that has really high quality photographs of antique samplers and 
it has lots of information in here and I haven't really read through it yet. I've, I've glanced through it. I'm really looking forward to taking some time to sit down um, with this and a cup of tea and really just read all about all the samplers that are in this book. Like, look at this one. I just, I, I just got kind of on a Google, Google hole thing where I was reading about sampler motifs and then I saw this book on Amazon and it had good reviews and I, like, that's gorgeous. I don't know. I just think it's, it's a nice, like, oh my God, look at this one. So yeah, so there's no charts in here. There's just pretty pictures of antique samplers, but I feel like, you know, it's got some good inspiration in there. Should I ever decide to design a sampler of my own, which I have an idea for, but I'm definitely not there yet. I should probably stitch and finish a couple of samplers before I try to design one, right? Okay, so that's everything I bought. That's everything I stitched. That's giveaway stuff. Um, okay, plans. So I, I'm gonna do mania. I know that I said my goals for the year were to cut my whips in half and finish the year of whips and really focus on things and finish all my sounds. And I've only finished three year of whips projects so far. And I have to finish seven more to complete the challenge. And it probably makes no sense to spend a month starting a bunch of things and not working on anything I currently have. And if I do 19 days of mania, that will bring my whip count up to 36, which is also crazy, but I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'm really craving a new start. I've been holding myself back. I've really been focusing on working on things. I feel like since I finished happily ever after, I deserve something like a little crazy. I'm going to do it. So I don't have any like solid plans. This isn't going to be like a mania planning video because I have kitted some things up, but loosely. So I basically have this like whole project bag full of charts that I could, that I could start right away, but either because I have the threads or because I am okay substituting the threads out. Like I have this little Lizzie Kate and I don't have these colors but I have definitely have colors that are close enough I definitely have fabric that's close enough um, there are most of these are small there's like a lot of Mill Hill kits in here and I'm gonna so my plan is for the first three days because I'm still gonna be working on this movie and I will have like only 20 minutes to stitch a day I'm gonna start a couple Mill Hill kits because those are all ready to go and I don't have to think and I can just start them for the first three days. And then on the fourth day, on the fourth day of Mania, I'm going to, um, on the fourth day of Mania, I'm going to use the Tiny Decisions app. Everything that's in here, I've already put into the Tiny Decisions app, so I'm going to use that to just pick my projects for the rest of the time. And I'm most of these are small, and my hope is to, with the smalls, finish finish a bunch of them during Mania. But there's also definitely some, I mean like I put the Northern Light Sampler in here. This is massive. So I put Sampler Story in here, enormous. I, I mean, I feel like I should be like, guys, talk me off the ledge, but don't. I want to be on this ledge. I'm going to jump. Let me go. I'm going to have a blast. I'm really excited. Okay, so that's it. So that's my whips. That's my plans. That's the stash I stashed. <laughs> I'm going to go maybe take a nap, but probably just do a bunch of things around the house and like pack and get my nails done and get myself together for this quick trip we're taking tomorrow. So Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. I'm sorry I was so cracked out. I don't know why I'm making these hand motions. I'm I'm really tired, so I'm gonna say bye. <laughs> Good luck to all of the, those of you who are doing mania, whether it's monogamous or um, classic or whatever version of it you're doing. I 
have been watching all the Mania Plans videos and I'm super excited. I love Mania. I love it. So I'm going to do a little vlogging during Mania. So I guess I will talk to you guys then. Um, take care guys. Bye.